Hi, it's time for Psalm 81. We are still in the middle of the Psalms that are by Asaph. Um, so let's jump in right away and let's look at a scripture first and pray. And we're going to look at um, Psalm 119 verse 36, which says, Turn my heart towards your statutes and not towards selfish gain. So Lord, I pray that you would turn our hearts toward your word towards the lessons that we can learn from your word towards you so that we can learn more about you and how you work and how you function lord so that we can be obedient to what you want and love the way you want us to love so lord i pray today as we study that our hearts would be turned towards your word amen so let's look at psalm 81 and we'll read it and then we'll break down what this psalm is all about Sing for joy to God our strength, shout aloud to the God of Jacob. Bring, begin the music, strike the timbrel, play the melodious harp and lyre, sound the ram's horn at the new moon, and when the moon is full on the day of our festival. This is a decree for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. When God went out against Egypt, he established it as a statute for Joseph. I heard an unknown, vo unknown voice say, I removed the burden from their shoulders. Their hands were set free from the basket. In your distress, you called and I rescued you. I answered you out of a thundercloud. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear me, my people, and I will warn you. If you would only listen to me, Israel, you shall have no foreign God among you. You shall not worship any God other than me. I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. But my people would not listen to me. Israel would not submit to me. So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own devices. If my people would only listen to me, if Israel would only follow my ways, how quickly I would subdue your enemies, their enemies, and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord will cringe before him and their punishment would last forever. But, but you would be fed with the finest of wheat, with honey from the rock, I would satisfy you. So an interesting psalm, um, and, and an, actually a difficult one to find a genre for, because the psalm seems to be divided into two different sections. Like the first part is... Um, kind of this celebration it starts with you know shouting aloud and singing for joy and all this music going on and it's like a, a celebration it's actually a festival celebration um and it's very i don't know exuberant celebratory and then then the whole mood of the psalm changes so the first part we're going to label from one to like right about here five um and this is the, the celebration part. It's very celebratory. Then the, the next half or the rest of the psalm is, is God talking to the people. And it's talking about what God has done and then how the people refuse to respond to God. So it's, it's a quite different from the very beginning. So the rest of the psalm, let's see, how do we want to mark this? I'm just going to write it over here. Um, I'm going to write the rest of the psalm is two different things. It's what God has done. And how the people refuse to respond. So how do we categorize a psalm like this when it's literally two different parts that are very different from each other? So some some will say this is a hymn of praise. Um, hard to see that because it's only really at the very beginning where we see that hymn of praise. Um, some will say it's like a lit lit liturgy, which would be something that was read aloud in a church service, which is possible. Um, so for this one, I don't really have a genre listed just because it is so different. Um, so what we're going to do is just kind of walk through some of the things that we see in this psalm. Um, mostly we're going to walk through what God has done and how the people refuse to respond to that because I think that that's um, 
going to be really applicable to our lives. But let's look at the very beginning. Um, the people begin by singing aloud, shouting aloud, playing their instruments, and then a festival begins. Um, it says, begin the music, strike the timbrel, play the harp. So we've got all this music going on. Sound the ram's horn. So we see a festival starting with the ram's horn being sounded, or sometimes we call that the shofar. Um, and if you want to write that down, um, it's spelled S-H-O-F-A-R. That's just the name of the ram's horn that would have been sounded. So I guess the question is, what festival is this? Well, the problem with this is that there's several different festivals it could be and so it's going to be hard to really figure out which one but let me walk through um, the different festivals that it could be so what we're going to do over here is we're going to write um, different festivals okay so this is um, what we're going to walk through is what festivals it could be and why okay so the first one Verse 3 says, sound the ram's horn at the new moon, and when the moon is full on the day of our festival. So from that, we know that it represents a 15-day festival, which makes it um, an, the autumn festival. So we're going to write down verse 3, and then we're going to write 15-day festival and we're saying that because it starts at the new moon and it goes until the moon is full so if it's a 15-day festival equals we're going to write autumn festival so that's one idea that we've seen um i've seen in commentaries okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just put a little circle here we're going to do like bullet points so that we've got here's this one here's this one okay so the second one that it could be comes from verse five. So we're gonna come over here. Let me just write this down, verse five. Okay, so let's read verse five, which says, when God went out against Egypt, he established it as a statute for Joseph. So this is indicating a festival that was set as like a testimony of what God has done. So when God went out against the land of Egypt, which, as we can see, when God went out against Egypt, which would make this a Passover festival. So we're going to do verse 5 um, indicates Passover. Now, if it's helpful to you, and sometimes it is for me, if it's helpful to you to highlight things so that when you look at it later, you can go back through and remember everything that we talked about. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just highlight it. So the 15 day festival from verse three is because it starts at the new moon and goes to when the moon is full. And that helps me to know the 15 day festival is the autumn festival. Then verse five, it's because it's when God went out against Egypt and we know that he established it as a statute. Okay, so that is the Passover festival. So it could be that. Then there's another thought out there. So let's do our third bullet point. And the other thought out there is the only festival. So we're just going to write this down. The only festival in Leviticus. That's where we see most of the festivals. Leviticus. And that would be in Leviticus 25, 9. So the only festival in Leviticus where you hear the blowing of the shofar, which again, we saw up here, right? The blowing of the shofar. So the only festival in Leviticus with the blowing of the shofar is the Day of Atonement. Okay, so those are the three thoughts. Um, again, I don't really have a solution or an answer there, but those are the three thoughts. And I'm going to, let's do this, the shofar ram's horn. 
So those are our three, and we can even label this as part of verse three if you want, so that you know where that the shofar is being blown. But there's the three different thoughts on what festival it is. Um, again, when I'm studying the word, uh, for me, um, the it's not that significant um, what festival it is when I'm studying this. I think what's more significant is just the fact that they're celebrating because of something that God had done. Um, and that's what we need to be doing. So I don't get bent about like, I don't really know for sure what festival. Let's do some more research. No, this is good enough for where I'm at. So those are the three festivals it could be. And again, we see that in this first section from 1 to 5b, we see this God calling out or someone calling out, Asaph calling out and saying, we need to be singing to joy to God because he's our strength. We need to shout out loud to the God of Jacob um, and and make music to him at, at a festival. And then the whole psalm shifts. And instead, we're hearing... Um, God speak. Now it starts and it says, I heard an unknown voice say, but then it says, I removed the burden from their shoulders. Their hands were set free from the basket. In your distress, you called and I rescued you. I answered you out of the thundercloud. So from that, we know that this is God speaking. Um, it's a speech from God. Um, and He's just saying all the things that I did. So let's go back and let's mark some of those things. What are the things that God says he has done for the people? So um, I highlighted this in orange. So I'm going to pick a different color to highlight. And since it's God, let's go with, I'm going to go with yellow. So we're going to highlight everything that God said he did. So it says here, I... I remove the burden. So there's one thing that God said he did. And then from their shoulders, their hands were, they were set free. In your distress, I, you called and I rescued you. I answered you. I tested you. Okay, so there's, um, I took away your burden. I I rescued you, I answered you, I tested you. So there, this is like a speech from God. And he's saying, here's the things that I have done for you. Okay, so he's going through and he's listing everything he's done. And then he says, I am going to warn you. Hear me, my people, I will warn you. And what we see here is the way Israel responded to God's call. Um, to say, you know, here's what I've done for you. And here's my warning. If you would only listen Okay, if you would only listen, this is really the key here to where Israel is at at the point because they would not listen. So I'm just going to kind of highlight that if you would only listen, here's the issue, right? Because then God says, um, you shall have no foreign gods. You shall not worship any God. So this is what they were doing. Okay, he's saying if you would only listen and here's how I want you to listen and this is what you've been doing. You've been bowing down to foreign gods. You've been not worshiping just me. You've been worshiping other gods too. But remember, I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt. See, I'm the one that did that. No other God could do that for you. So he's just saying to them, this is who I am and what I've done for you. And then it says, open wide your mouth and I will fill it. So <clears throat> this to me is another, I don't want to say key verse, but this to me is like a promise or a, like God saying, you know, if you would only turn to me and me alone and you would open your mouth, I would fill it. Um, is that with praise, with worship towards God? <clears throat> but it's this, it's this cry and this plea from the heart of God. Please just listen to me. If you would listen, this is what I would do for you. But then what does it say? But my people would not listen to me. So here it is again. It it God's. It's like we're we're literally seeing God's pain, and it's all because His people would not listen. That that's the rule root of all of this is that my people would not listen to me. They would not submit to me. 
Okay, so even when God did all these things for them, which we saw, I did all these things for you. I told you not to worship other gods, but you would not listen to me and you would not submit to me. And because they would not, God gave them over to their stubborn hearts. So this is where you see God crying out to people. But when they refuse to listen, then God's just going to give them over to their stubborn hearts. And that's that's a really scary thought to me, and it always reminds me of Romans one, because um, in Romans one, God says the same type of thing, like because they would not listen, and they made um, images out of other things and began to worship those. God gave them over to their their stubborn hearts, their and they, and then it goes on to futile thinking and all of that because they would not listen. So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own devices. So there again, God's going, if my people would only listen, if people, if Israel would follow my ways, how quickly I would subdue their enemies. So it's again, like God just crying out and saying, if you would, if you would listen, but you refused. How quickly I would subdue your enemies and turn my hand against the, their foes. And yet they would not, they would not listen. They would not submit to God. And yet God is crying out to them and saying, if you would, this is what I would do for you. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him and their punishment would last forever. I would subdue your enemies. You would be fed with the finest of wheat and honey from the rock. I would satisfy you, but they would not. So to me, I listen to this psalm and it's, it's sad. It's sad because they would not listen. And I look through it and I go, look at all the things that God said he would do. He said, um, if my people would listen, here's one, open, I would open your mouth. I would fill it. If my people would only listen, how quickly I would subdue your enemies I would punish your enemies before you. You would be well fed. I would satisfy you. These are all the things that God said he would do if they would only listen, and yet they refused. So this psalm is, is interesting because it starts with this exuberant celebration of who God is and all that God has done, and then it turns to this plea um, of God to his people saying, listen to me, follow me. I'm warning you. This is, this is what I'm calling you to do. And it's interesting because most Psalms end with some sort of resolution or some sort of change of heart. But this Psalm has no resolution. There's no indication that whoever was listening to this responded to God's pleas. Um, so God basically, as one of the commentaries said, God remains at the table without any guests. So what began with singing and jubilation ends with God sitting alone because the people would not listen and the people would not respond. So Lord, I pray that as we read this psalm and as we study this psalm and as we go through this, that our hearts would be softened and opened to listening to God. Lord, I just convicts my heart when I read this and think, this is what God did for me. He removed my burdens. He has set me free when I call out to him. He answers me. He has rescued me. And yet we can be so hard-hearted and not listen. And so, God, I pray that you would help us to be a people that would listen to you and that we would submit to you, God, and that we would follow your ways, Lord, because that is what you're calling out for us to do. That is your heart. And God, we want to be one with you. So Lord, help us to be a people that will listen to you. Amen. So I hope that there was something that jumped out at you today and really spoke to you. For me, it was just this concept of, am I listening to the Lord? Am I submitting? Am I following his ways? Because that is what God is calling out for me to do. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought.